Breaking news involving the Boy Scouts, the 110 year old organization now filing for bankruptcy as they face hundreds of sex abuse lawsuits. Gio Benitez is here with the details. Good morning, Gio. Hey, Michael, good morning. Yeah, the Scouts say they intend to use the Chapter 11 process to create a victim's compensation trust. Their president saying, quote, the BSA cares deeply about all victims of abuse and sincerely apologizes to anyone who was harmed during their time in scouting. Now, they also say scouting programs will continue for their nearly 2.2 million members. Now this comes after more than a dozen states passed laws making it possible for sex abuse lawsuits to be filed regardless of when the alleged abuse occurred. The Boy Scouts now call their youth safety measures the strongest and most effective policies found in any youth serving organization. But guys, what a big headline overnight. Huge. Yes. Thank you both. Including 1,850 deaths. In the past 24 hours, China has reported 1,800 new cases, including both clinically and lab-confirmed cases. Outside China, there are now 804 cases in 24 countries, with three deaths. In the past 24 hours, there have been 110 new cases outside China, including 99 on the Diamond Princess uh, cruise ship. We have now had cases of COVID-19 outside China for more than a month. We're supporting national authorities in every country that has cases to track the virus and understand how people were infected. So far, there are 92 cases in 12 countries outside China of human to human transmission. At the moment, we don't have data on cases outside. At the moment, we don't have enough data on cases outside China to make a meaningful comparison on the severity of disease or the case fatality rate. We're following up with countries to get more information about what happens about each case and the outcome. However, we have not yet seen the sustained local transmission except in specific circumstances like the Diamond Princess cruise ship. Yesterday, I spoke to Singapore's Minister of Health and we're very impressed with the efforts they're making to find every case, follow up with contacts and stop transmission. Singapore is leaving no stone unturned testing every case of influenza-like illness and pneumonia, and so far they have not found evidence of community transmission. I also spoke to the Minister of Health of Malaysia to discuss the Western Dam case and other aspects of their preparations. These signals show the importance of all countries being ready for the arrival of the virus, to treat patients with dignity and compassion, to protect health workers, and to prevent onward transmission. From toys and tech to clothes and cars, many American staples, of course, are still made in China, but the deadly coronavirus outbreak is causing a huge supply chain stutter. China is responsible for driving around a fifth of global economic growth. So the fact that we're seeing factories shut down, consumers staying at home and not able to spend money, that all means that we can expect to see the global economy also take a hit. Despite an ongoing trade war, China is still the United States' largest trading partner. But American businesses and consumers are now starting to see the coronavirus ripple effect. On Monday, Apple became the first major U.S. company to announce it won't meet its revenue projections for this financial quarter. China makes 80 percent of the world's smartphones and tablets, and iPhone production has fallen victim to the outbreak break. Over 1 million Amazon sellers who depend on factory workers in China for their small business marketplaces are now facing serious inventory shortages as well. 
and apparel companies are bracing for a financial hit and significant delivery delays. Under Armour's CEO telling CNBC he's expecting a $60 million loss for the start of the year. Cars are not doing any better. Many Chinese auto plants, including factories run by Tesla, Ford, and Nissan, have all shut down. And as goods bound for the U.S. remain stuck in Chinese docks, analysts say shoppers might start seeing items missing from big box store shelves as early as April. For consumers fearing packages from China could get them sick, the CDC says coronavirus is spread through respiratory droplets and generally has poor survivability on surfaces, although there is... Vaccine development is progressing, and when you might expect first clinical trials in humans to begin? Thank you. We, we don't have uh, new data since the research uh, meeting, and at this meeting they were discussing about... Uh, Having a candidate vaccine by in, in around 16 weeks from now, uh, but again, this would be just to have the candidate, and then, depending on the safety uh, test, um, deciding if it will be used in humans. So. Uh, Waiting for another attack that may lead to a food emergency. Locusts, millions of them, have struck countries in the Horn of Africa. Uganda has even deployed 2,000 soldiers to counter this attack. The next target is West and Southwest Asia. Pakistan fears it will be among the worst hit and it has turned to India for help. This report has more. Pakistan is bracing for an onslaught. And it has turned to India for help. The attackers are millions of inch long pests on their way to wage war on Pakistani crops. Locusts from Africa are headed to Pakistan. And Islamabad has sought to import chemicals from India to fight them. Pakistan declared a national emergency over locusts early this month. Swarms of locusts destroyed their maize, cotton, wheat and other crops. Some 40 to 80 million locusts are capable of wiping out food for 35,000 people. But to tackle this menace, authorities feel helpless. With swathes of the UK underwater, many communities are slowly being cut off. Through Worcestershire, Gloucestershire and South Wales, we found road after road inundated with flood water. Motorists are being warned not to put themselves in any danger. Many roads will remain closed for days to come. At six o'clock people get through um, and we didn't have any road closure signs put up so people continue to go through and I think from about seven, eight o'clock that's when they got into trouble and their cars mm. stuck. And with river levels rising, some residents have already become trapped. How bad is it? It's OK. Tony Kell's home on the River Severn is now surrounded by raging flood water, but he is unconcerned. But you're completely cut off. That's a good thing. But that's a good thing, he says. People living this close to nature are having to get used to more unpredictable weather. And that means coping with almost regular floods. But more areas are becoming at risk as Britain's storms...